some of that footage wasn't shot with an iPhone. So on the last press conference, I spent a major portion of that discussing my first weekend in Los Angeles, the incident that I had. But that clip came from exactly 10 years ago today, on June 17. And that wasn't a great night in the NBA, but it was certainly a great night for me, that whole city year, Greater Philadelphia core, that staff. And I don't get one year in Los Angeles, um, let alone 10, without those special group of people touching my life. And I thank them for everything that I've had over these last 10 years, not including the one year that we spent together. When it comes to fighting racism in America, really across the world, I feel like we're in the fourth stage of grief right now. We saw what the first stage of grief looked like, denial, at the end of May when people were like, we're not really doing this again, are we? This can't be happening. You saw the second stage of grief, anger, when this month started and there were curfews and threats on citizens who were peacefully protesting. The third stage of grief, bargaining, where people were like, you know, how about we allocate those funds that law enforcement gets and place it towards causes that will help balance society, especially in urban communities, out more effectively. So this stage of depression, it's a matter of, it's important to check on people. It's important to keep those strong folks going. It's important to realize that this heaviness, this patience, this need to change things has been passed down generation to generation to generation. And that weight is being carried on a lot of shoulders right now. And it gets difficult. Who knows what the next phase of this is supposed to look like? Acceptance? I mean, I think we all need to understand what we're going to accept, right? I mean, we're not there yet. On the note of uplifting people, and on speaking of city of Philadelphia, another alum, Alessandra, passed on to me an event that she's having with her team organizing together 2020 in Philly. And it goes a little something like this. Join Organizing Together 2020, activists and community members to celebrate the anniversary of Juneteenth, the anniversary of the announcement of the abolition of slavery throughout the former Confederacy. While we can't be in person, we can celebrate and honor this day virtually with music, speakers, and community. We can't wait to see you all soon. That is on Friday, June 19 at 4 Eastern. So if you're in Philadelphia or obviously anywhere with a Wi-Fi connection better than Nelly's, then go ahead and show support. I want to talk about my dad for a moment. When my brother and I were young, my dad used to always say, I want to be just like you when you grow up. And when you're six, you're just like, that's silly. You're already growing up. What does that even mean? And then you get to be in your 30s and your dad still says it. And not only do you get it, but it means so much more now. I'm not even a father. And yet, I understand from how my dad looked at me when I was young, looks at me now, and I understand that my dad set multiple examples for me. Many of them were very good examples, and some of them were examples of what not to do or things to do better. My dad showed me a lot of strength and he showed me a lot of vulnerability. And I'm a reaction to how my dad lived his life and how he carried on his relationships. I try to be the best person I can and I know my dad has always tried to be the best person that he can. And as the relationship with my father has evolved, it's like I realize I'm not a father, but one day I hope when I have a son or a daughter that I can be like them, that I can see the example 
that they are having at a very early age and be so proud of them and to love them so unconditionally that I would want to be just like them and, and to understand that you never stop growing, whether you're not a teenager yet or you're in your 20s and 30s or when you're in your 50s and 60s and 70s, like you never stop growing. Understanding that possibility has been the greatest thing that my dad probably could have imparted on me. And I thank him for that. That's all for this week's version of press conference. Happy Father's Day, and hopefully I'll see you next week.